morning, everybody. Welcome to the Innovation Nation webinar. We're really excited to have all of you here, um, all of the teachers that have done Innovation Nation last year and that are doing it sometime for you for the first time this year. I'm Jamie Burke, and I'm from Science Buddies, and Taisha Rowland, who is one of our staff scientists, is going to be providing you with the tour today. We're really thrilled to be partnering with Innovation Nation again for the second year. Um, through Life Technologies, we've been very, very excited and happy to be part of the project. We feel like it's a great way to get kids engaged and excited about science. Um, before we get started, I just want to tell you just a, briefly a few quick things about Science Buddies. I know that a lot of you have used us as a resource in the past. Science Buddies was founded in 2001 with the goal of really making science and engineering literacy possible for all students. The heart of what we do is providing engaging and hands-on project ideas for K-12 through students. These are written by our staff of scientists and engineers. And for those of you who have spent time on our site, you know that we've got a lot of project ideas. We've got about 1,200 different project ideas on our site. They range in 32 different interest areas. We like to say that we do everything from astronomy to zoology. And the reason that we provide this huge range of choices is because time after time, research really shows, and I'm sure that you've found from your work in the classroom, that students are much more, more likely to learn when they're engaged. And they're much more likely to be engaged when they're working on a project that really fits their interests. So that's the background about Science Buddies. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be giving you a tour of the Innovation Nation landing page. We know that you're busy as class teachers. We've got one more to join the call. Christina? Uh, hey, this is uh, Christina Seisman. She stepped out. Oh. Uh, okay. We were having a lot of trouble trying to get this started, and so she's going to be right back in. She just okay. stepped outside really quick. Sorry. Great. Great. No problem. Welcome. Yeah. We were just getting started. Um, there's a little feedback. If uh, I think the microphone needs to be muted. Oh, okay. Do you know how to mute the microphone at the top of your screen? Uh, no. Oh, there I see it. Okay. You see it? Yep. You're just going to turn it red? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so um, getting back to what I was saying, and we'll, we'll see when Christina joined us, joins us in a minute. We know that you're really busy as classroom teachers, and so what we've done is we've we've aggregated all the content for Innovation Nation onto a single landing page that Taisha is going to be giving you a tour of. This includes lots of resources for you to use for yourselves as teachers, um, resources that you can share with your students, and resources that you can share with your parents. And then we're going to end the webinar today with just a, a very um, quick look at what to do next, just so that you're, you're clear about what the next steps will be. So I'm going to turn the actual tour over to Taisha Rowland. Taisha is one of our staff scientists. She's been with Science Buddies for about two years, and she's got a PhD in stem cell research. Um, so she'll be doing the tour. I just want to say, uh, Christina, hi, thank you, but we're glad you joined us today. And um, if you have a question, just feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself at the top and, and jump right in, and Lenora's with us too. Okay, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Taisha. All right. Hello, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, you should now be seeing the Innovation Nation landing page, and it is broken up into different sections. You can see it has an overview, a teacher section, a student section, and a parent section, and these are shown on the gray bar at the, the top of the landing page. I will first show you how to use the resources in the Teachers tab. So we're going to go there now. And um, if you need access for accessing this website, the, um, the URL is in your, your packet. So just loading this real quick. Um, Sorry, it seems to be taking a moment to load. Just one moment. Um, <laughs> for some reason, the page is taking a moment to load. Um, hmm. Thank you for your patience. Um, 
Hmm. Okay, so Sorry, technical. Start with um, scrolling down to the different projects. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why it's having taking a moment to load. Um, sure, I'll start on that. So you can see here on the overview page, um, basically it gives several different project ideas that students can do, and they're they're broken up here um, by difficulty level. By you can see we have fifth grade projects, seventh grade projects, and ninth grade projects. They're broken up by within those grade levels. They're broken up by easy, moderate, and challenging. Um, so these are just our library of project ideas, we have over 1,500 different project ideas, and these are just a few that have been handpicked um, that are relevant to the, the modules for Innovation Nation. Um, so you can look through these. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, like I said, it has easy, moderate, and challenging projects right here on the, the main page. Um, I'm just going to try to load this again. <sighs> hmm. Sorry. Um, Jamie, can you load it on your screen and share it? Yep. Yeah, uh, no, I can't. You know what? I'm just uh, yimming somebody. Oh, our site just went down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me. This okay. does not happen All right. very this often. <laughs> this like never happens. Okay, of hang on. Um, I'm hearing that I'm hearing from the engineers, so just sit tight for one second here. Yeah, sorry about this. I think Taisha, <laughs> given that you've got all of your great notes, mm -hmm. um, could you kind of go from the notes that you have? And sure, I can go ahead and go from the notes. Um, Even though they're not seeing it. Yeah, um, so, so once it once it does load, I can go over and show where these are. But basically, in the teacher section, there are uh, subsections within there, and there are various resources that are linked to. So I will just go over what is covered there. I mean, basically, it's uh, links and a short description of what the links are. Um, so... Basically, in the, the teacher section, you can find the main resources a teacher needs to create their science night, and they're all in one place. So in order to access the free resources in the teacher section, you just need to start by creating a free Science Buddies account. And there's a link at the top of this section that uh, shows you how to make an account. It will take you through that process. Um, and then once you have an account, you can access the resources from a computer or mobile device. Um, Again, like I said, the Science Buddies website has even more resources for students and teachers, but here we're just going to highlight some key resources for teachers uh, to use to create a science night or a science fair. So we'll now cover each of the tools in the different sections in detail. Oh, and there it is, just in time. So I was just um, showing up here at the top is where you can create a Science Buddies account to access these resources. Um, and so now we'll cover each of the tools in these different sections in detail to show you how best to use them. So first we'll go over the tools for planning and running a science fair or family science night. And that's this first uh, section here that has the dark gray bar. And uh, we at Science Buddies know it can be hard to plan and execute a science fair, and we're trying to make it easier for you. So the first resource here is the family science night planning tool. And it is an outline written by teachers that shows how to set up your own family science night. It basically includes tips and suggestions for making it successful, as well as several specific activities you could do that come from different areas of science. The next resource in this section is the Guide to Planning a Science Fair. And this is basically a detailed step-by-step -step guide for teachers who want to plan their own science fair. So it's loaded with tools, tips, and tricks so that you can offer your students the benefits of a full science fair event. It, it also includes information on recruiting and training volunteers and judges and how to set up the judging process of the science fair projects and also how to announce winners and, and lots more. It's all in this, this second resource listed here. So after you decide whether you want to do a family science night or a science fair, we hope that you will refer back to these guides to help you through the process. The next resource uh, in this section is the, the judging guide. 
And the guide includes an introduction to you, the teacher, about judging science fairs, as well as instructions for judges, including their typical responsibilities, frequently asked questions, and what the science project expectations should be for different aspects of a project based on grade level. Um, the scorecard resource right below it is uh, where we have different scorecards available based on the level of students' understanding and whether the projects are ones that follow either the scientific method or the engineering design process. So in this resource, we also include scoring guidelines for uh, using the scorecard um, so their guide, so judges can understand how to use them. Um, so in the next section, this section uh, here we will go over resources to introduce science projects to students and help them answer their science questions. So basically, if students have not done a science project before or if they have limited exposure, these introductions can be quite helpful. And there are also other tools in the section that are valuable to more advanced students as well. So the, the top resource here, the Teacher's Guide to Science Projects, it's basically a detailed guide and timeline that shows how to have students complete a science project. And it also includes student worksheets that you could give um, throughout, you know, for each different phase of the science project. The next resource, uh, the Science Fair Project Guide, is written for students. It includes an introduction to the scientific method and step-by-step -step guidance through different components of a science project, along with examples. So in this guide, you can also find helpful information on how to formulate and test a good hypothesis, which you know, can be a challenging aspect of the science project for even advanced students. There's also a section on helping students to communicate the results, which includes information on how to write a report and also things like organizing their display board. The next resource um, is the topic selection wizard. And we're going to go into this one in a little bit of depth because um, it can be very useful. So this tool helps students choose a science project that interests them. And as I'm sure you've observed, students are, are more likely to enjoy and do well at a science project if it's something that interests them. So you can have your students complete this brief online survey to give them personalized science project recommendations. The, the recommended project ideas uh, generated by the topic selection wizard come from Science Buddies Library of more than 1,200 project ideas, which are authored by scientists. The project ideas span 30 fields of science and engineering, so students have a wide variety of topics to choose from. Um, so we'll walk through how the topic selection wi wizard works and show results from a sample student. So I have it opened right here. So this is uh, the first page, basically, of the topic selection wizard. Um, and it can be customized based on, you can see here, based on due dates. So when is your project due? And grade levels, you know, you can pick, you can choose a grade. I've picked seventh grade. Um, whether, you, whether you have to do a certain area of science or if you can pick any area of science. And there's also a filter on a uh, reading level. So whether you're just starting, progressing, or confident. So um, and then they'd hit continue and they'd fill out a survey, which I've actually already filled out as an example. Um, so basically, this is a, a brief 26-question survey on their interests and hobbies. You can see here uh, their questions like, do you enjoy gardening and working with plants? Yes, sometimes no. Um, is math your favorite subject in school? Yes, sometimes no. You know, and you just they just go through. It's um, it really goes pretty quickly. They're just 26 questions, and then they hit make recommendations at the end there. Um, so in this sample student, um, here are the recommendations they have. So basically, it's a list of project ideas that match their interest based on the responses they gave in the survey. And they're ranked so that the top ones most closely match their answers from the survey. So you can see here, this, there's a project idea called Caffeine and Heart Rate, a pharmacological study using Daphne and Magna. And this is the one that most closely matched their interests. And it's also in their difficulty range as well. So, um, and you can see there's several others here. So I'm just, I'm going to pick um, this top one here. 
and we're going to briefly look at this project idea to, to basically give you an idea of what a project idea is and what it offers the student. So each project idea is broken up into a series of tabs, um, kind of like the Innovation Nation landing page. Each tab has different information. Um, the first tab is the summary tab, and it includes an overview of the project idea. So you can see here, it includes uh, things like it shows what the difficulty level is, um, how long it takes to complete the project, if there are any specialty items or prerequisites that are needed, um, any special materials. You know, I mean, for prerequisites, you need access to a microscope um, and cost, you know, how much it would cost the students, which we know is important. Um, any safety issues. And then, you know, the abstract is just a, a short summary of what the project idea is about. And the objective is, you know, the goal of the science project. So going to the, the background tab, um, it basically gives background information that students should have for understanding and doing the science project. And this should give them enough information to, to help them formulate a hypothesis. And at the bottom here, um, there's a section on uh, there's a section of resources called the bibliography so they can look there and and get further reading suggestions from there as well the materials tab the next tab here is basically it basically lists materials they need to do the science project um, and if there are any specialty items that need to be ordered we try to provide online suppliers they can order from so you can see here you know, they to get caffeine, for instance, they have to get it through a special company. Um, and here we recommend Carolina Biological Supply Company. So we've gone through and already found where they can get some of these specialty items to try and make it easier for them to order and do the science project. Um, the next section is the procedure. So, and as the name implies, it basically gives step-by-step -step instructions for how to do the science project. Next, we have uh, the Make It Your Own tab. And this section lists variations of the main science project idea that students could try. These either build off of the existing project idea, or they are more standalone, independent ideas students can pursue instead of doing the full science project idea. The Help section on the far right uh, directs students to the Ask an Expert resource, which we'll get to in a moment. And for some science projects, there's also a list of frequently asked questions in this section, so students can get help with uh, specific things that you know we, we know students have needed help with in the past. Um, the very last section says learn more. So this lists careers related to the science project that students might be interested in. And we'll get to the careers in a moment, too. So this is just a quick overview of what a standard project idea looks like. There's a lot of information that was skipped over for the sake of time, uh, but feel free to ask any questions in the chat window as we continue. Um, going back to the, the Innovation Nation landing page, so if you go all the way back to the overview, um, we mentioned this at the beginning of the talk, um, but here you can see several, this might make more sense now, um, what the project ideas are. You can see several recommended science project ideas related to Innovation Nation modules. Um, and as I mentioned, um, these project ideas, ideas not only range by grade level, but also within grade level from easy, moderate to challenging. So these are just some project ideas that have already been picked if you want to use them. Going back to the Teachers tab, we'll go back to where we took off from. Um, and this will be the Ask an Expert tool. So the Ask an Expert, um, it is basically an online forum that puts students with questions about their science project or any other science questions they have in direct contact with volunteer and professionals, uh, professional scientists and engineers, including Life Technologies employees. So these experts don't do the students' work, but they instead help guide students to reach the right answers and help them overcome technical challenges. Um, so when you or your students register to use the resource uh, for Innovation Nation, we ask that you please add the, the letters L-T-I-N to the end of your username so that students' questions can uh, be easily identified. And, and Katie was really actively involved last time with this process and has been very involved this time too, and we greatly appreciate that. 
So the next section we'll go over, scrolling down, um, is a shorter one. So this is the Science Fair grading rubric resource. This is another useful resource for executing a science fair if you have not done one before. And basically, um, the science fair grading rubric resource includes a series of grading rubrics for science projects with a different rubric for each different component of the science project. For example, there's a rubric for grading a student's research plan and a rubric for grading the section on data analysis and graphs. Um, and the next section uh, includes tools that are related to integrating topical science in the classroom. So basically, if you are interested in integrating science in your classroom, we hope that you will use some of these long-term ideas. Um, the, first, the first group of resources are the classroom activities. So classroom activities are generally quick, hands-on science activities that can be done in the classroom or in an after-school program. They're broken up by a difficulty level and area of science, and they also include both a teacher and a student guide. The next item here is the Science Buddies newsletter, and it is a free monthly newsletter that includes our new project ideas, uh, classroom activities, any science events that are taking place, as well as new science resources, contests, and giveaways for teachers. Next is the Science Buddies blog. So the Science Buddies blog often ties together current events with science project ideas and other resources on the Science Buddies website. So for example, here's just a, a recent post on the blog. Um, this was a fascinating piece that talked about the discovery of a skeleton beneath a parking lot that was found to belong to Richard III. Um, Sorry, I'm just reading the questions real quick you guys have. Okay. Okay, it looks like Jamie. Um, yeah. Um, Tysha, they have a question about um, how to pick projects, whether it should be based on whether they need to recommend that the students do a specific grade level. Um, and mm -hmm. so I pointed them to the difficulty rating on the projects. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else you want to add to that? I pointed them to that portion of the site. Um, any thoughts yeah. about that? Well, so the, the grade level um, for the topic selection wizard actually is grade level. I know that the, the difficulty level um, on each project idea um, has a <laughs> doesn't have a, as, as quite a close correlation as what the topic selection wizard does, but you can see basically in the topic selection wizard that you do pick a grade level, a specific one. So you you can have them pick. I mean, what will happen is uh, I think it makes you pick your the grade level. And let me see though, if you just pick choose grade, yeah, you have to pick a grade level. So they'll have to pick something. Um, they could, but when they pick the grade level and when they get the results, it, it, it shows them a slight range around the grade level. So some are a little harder, some are a little easier. So they can look at that, that range and, and pick the project out of those. And I see there's another question, the difficulty rating. Of okay. Yeah, so as, as Jamie linked to, um, the, the difficulty level on the project ideas, um, and I'll just show that briefly. So you can see here on this caffeine project idea, the difficulty rating says it's intermediate hard. And for any of these project ideas, if you click on the difficulty rating, you can see what that, how that correlates to grade level. So just by clicking on that, you can see intermediate hard um, at the bottom here would be around seventh and eighth grade. So if you see how that makes sense, because um, Beginner is basically around K through 4, intermediate is about 5 through 8, and advanced is 9 through 12. Um, so you can see these correlations here and uh, have students pick based on that. So I hope that answers the questions. Um, feel free to, to chat, to type in any more questions that come up as we go along. Um, so I'll get back to where I was with the blog. So, so basically, this, this piece went into the history surrounding the discovery of the skeleton that belonged to Richard III, um, and it went into 
how scientific procedures such as DNA sequencing were used to identify the skeleton as Richard III. And then this, so I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. Um, you can see near the bottom here, this article, it then ties the, the story into project ideas that are related to DNA sequencing and genetics. So, um, such as this one on what is the woolly mammoth's closing li closest living relative. So, these are different genetics and DNA related project ideas. Um, and at the very bottom, there's also a section on further reading. So, there, there are suggestions for students to do further reading if this interests them. So basically, subscribing to the blog and the Science Buddies newsletter are ways to help bring real, science, uh, real world scientific findings and information into the classroom. Um, going back to the landing page, um, let's see. Lastly, in this section, uh, we talk about social media. So we, we are on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and also Pinterest. You can follow Science Buddies on um, these several different social media streams for up-to-the-moment announcements and tie-ins to current and historical events. So the last section um, in the teacher's resources section are on informing students about careers in science. So this first resource here is uh, the science careers. Basically, the Science Buddies website has more than 150 career profiles for science and engineering careers. And I'm going to briefly show this to you. So you can see here, um, they're organized here by different areas of science. You can see we've got like earth and environmental science, physical science, and there's more. Here's a whole life sciences section. Um, so there's a whole range of career uh, careers that are arranged based on um, the area of science. So, and, and each of these profiles give detailed information on all aspects of a specific career. We're going to quickly look at one career profile in the, as an example. So, I've pulled up here um, the Certified Diabetes Educator Career. Basically, the first section here, uh, which is called What Do They Do? It has examples with visuals of what that person would do at a regular day on the job. So you can see here, a certified diabetes educator would, for example, help a person with diabetes come up with guidelines for a diet. So these are just um, different examples of what they do along with some visuals. And then in the next section, which is called Key Facts and Information, in this section students can get a general overview of what a person in this career does and what requirements need to be fulfilled to get there. So. You can see here, here's the overview and then key requirements. Um, in addition, we also talk about what kind of educational requirements are needed, um, as well as, you know, related to this, what classes they should take in high school. And it also discusses the median salary and the projected job growth. And then at the very bottom, there are links to interviews with people in this career and related careers. So I'm not going to go into all the other tabs, but there, there are several other sections um, that a career is broken into. Basically, they go into greater depth about the careers, such as by giving the student an idea of what education or training they'd need to get into that career and what their life would be like on the job. So going back to the Innovation Nation landing page, at the very bottom of the teacher section, there is a worksheet. It's called the Innovation, Sci Innovation Nation Science Career Worksheet. And this is a tool to help students internalize the information of what that career would be like for them, to you know, give them a personal perspective. And we realize that part of the value of the Innovation Nation program is to let students meet scientists that will have these careers. This worksheet is just another way to make a science career seem less abstract and more relevant to a student's own world. So we're going to move on to the student resources. And again, if there are any questions, feel free to type them in the chat bar. Um, moving on to the student tab. 
So this section is like the one for teachers, but it is focused on students. These are the main resources a student needs to make a science project and explore science in other ways. To access these free resources, students start by creating a free Science Buddies account by following the link at the top of this tab. And you can see here it says, create a free Science Buddies account. Um, once they have their account, they can access these resources from a computer or mobile device. Again, the Science Buddies website has even more resources for students, but here we are highlighting some key resources for students to use. If you intend to have your students use the Science Buddies website, this would be a great starting URL to give them. We've already covered many of these tools from where they appear in the teacher section, so we'll just briefly discuss what's available here and introduce any new resources. So we've already talked about the topic selection wizard. Um, Let's see. So students can directly access the topic selection wizard here if they want to, um, to find a science project that matches their interests. Going down to point number three, we already covered the science fair project guide and ask an expert forum. Again, students can directly access these resources right here. Now we'll look at some of the tools listed here that focus on helping students have fun with science experiments. So. The first group of resources here are the hands-on science activities. This is basically a list of project experiments that, that students can easily do using simple household materials. Next are the summer science camp resource, uh, and this guide helps students find a science summer camp, uh, a summer a summer science camp that matches their interests. Next, uh, we talked about the Science Buddies blog, uh, but students can directly access it here. We also have a YouTube channel, and students can access it here to watch some videos of our science projects. So lastly, um, at the bottom here, students can also directly access the Science Buddies blog uh, as well. Uh, sorry, wrong thing. Um, but at the very bottom here, where it says exploring a career in science, this is where students can directly access the career profiles uh, from this section, which we already talked about. So the last group of resources we're going to talk about is uh, the Parent tab. So basically, um, these are this area has relevant tools for parents who want to be engaged in a student's science project. Um, and I see a question. Let me uh, let me look at it right now. Okay, so the question is, would you recommend each student having their own account rather than accessing Science Buddies through the teacher account? Um, so and that relates to, at the top of the Students tab, it says create a, a free Science Buddies account. And we would recommend that students have their own account um, because for, for different tools such as the Ask an Expert Forum, there, you can only have one username for each email address. So students will need to make their own username and account to use the resources. And we also say sometimes if students don't have an email address, they can uh, they can try to use their parents' email address instead and sign and use the make an account through that. So going back to the parents section, um, as I said, this basically has tools for parents who want to be involved in their students' science project and just you know explore science with them. So the first group of tools here are aimed at helping a parent engage with a student while doing their science project. Here, the parents can directly access the topic selection wizard, which is right at the top here, as well as the science fair project guide, um, the third item here, and the ask an expert form, which is at the bottom here. We also have a parent guide to helping uh, with science projects. This is the second item here. And this gives practical suggestions for how a parent can get involved and help to support their student's project. The second group of tools are aimed at helping a parent just generally discuss science with their child. And these are all resources we've covered elsewhere, but you can see that here parents can directly access them. So, You've now seen the resources available on the Innovation Nation landing page. Please feel free again to use the chat window to submit any additional questions. Now we will go back to Jamie. Okay. 
So, okay, no questions at this point. Um, so I'm just going to wrap it up with uh, the points about what to do next. So again, what you want to do next is to create a free Science Buddies account if you haven't already done so to access the resources. To check out the Ask an Expert tool, and again, just a reminder to add, um, when you're creating your username, just add the letters L-I-T-N to the end of that username. That really helps us to kind of flag what your questions are so that we can sort of track if there's any, any trends and questions or anything that's coming up around the Innovation Nation project. Please make sure that you do that and ask your students to do that as well when they're creating their Ask an Expert uh, registration. Then I know that Lenore has already done this and maybe you've done this too, Christina, decide between doing a science fair or a family science night or it sounds like you're going to be maybe doing both of those, which is great. Direct the students to the student tab and parents to the parent tab. And then think about exploring some of those long-term ideas that Taisha talked about, the, uh, the activities and the blog posts as ways to integrate science into the classroom uh, later on in the year. And then Taisha, can you get the next slide up for me? Yep. Great. Okay, and then to wrap it up, uh, we're right here. If you have any questions or need help from us, if you've got science questions, again, create the account and log into the Ask an Expert forum. And then if you have general questions, you can email us, us at sciBuddy.sciencebuddies.org. Science, and it's been great spending time with you guys. We wish you the best of the luck, and I hope you enjoy your, uh, your nice day off in the snow this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for bearing with us through the technical difficulties, too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.